Welcome back to another edition of Special Situations Investing with Greg. This week I'm talking about two different tender offers. One, the Trinet Group tender offer. It's a Dutch tender offer that was announced this last week. And then I will do an update on Cerner Corporation in its current tender offer that is part of the Oracle acquisition for that company. Check it out. Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of my YouTube channel on Special Situations Investing through and my personal investing practice. As a quick disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only. Any companies that I mention in this presentation are discussed solely for illustrative purposes. Discussing such companies and the specifics about them is to help educate me and educate you about certain special situations. It is not a solicitation to purchase them. I recommend that you conduct your own research and identify why you might want to own the company yourself prior to your committing of any funds. I also recommend that you seek the services of a financial advisor that has considered your personal situation as your fiduciary. And then finally, may your education here grow your knowledge, improve your personal investing performance, and give you the confidence to take control of your future. Thanks a bunch for watching. Now on to the video. Hello mutant investors. This week we are talking a little bit about two new, two new tender offers. Um, I wanted to make a quick little apology. I'm sorry I missed last week. I had a lot of things that came up in work and I was unable to do it and uh, unfortunately uh, you guys suffered for that and I apologize for missing that week. That's the first week that I've missed for over two years so I hope you'll forgive me and um, we can continue to have a good relationship. I really appreciate all of the support that I've been getting from you. I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking, talking about two different tender offers. The first one is the company Trinet Group. Trinet Group offers a tender offer that was announced just this last week for their shares, uh, and it's a Dutch tender offer, and the Dutch tender offer has a range between 83 and 80, uh, sorry, $97 per share. The last trade for this company was around $87 a share, and so this tender offer uh, might have some potential upside, being that it is a Dutch tender offer. That doesn't necessarily mean that it will. Uh, it depends on, on what the price is for the company and how people are willing to participate in it. My observation over time has been that Dutch tender offers usually rise towards the higher end of the range for the Dutch tender offer over the time uh, of the, the month after an announcement to the actual announcement. So um, I don't know what will happen with this one, but that is something that I've observed over the past couple of years. In full disclosure, I'm not participating in this tender offer. Part of that is because I don't have any cash available in my investment accounts for this at the moment. All of my money is tied up in other things. However, I, I would find that this, this might be an interesting investment at this juncture. The tender offer doesn't end until March 17th, so there might still be an opportunity to jump into it. I think it would be a no-brainer if it drops below the $83 a share, and uh, I think that there's still possibility uh, somewhere in the $85 a share range. One final note, just remember that this tender offer looks like it's a purchase for about 5% of the company, so if you wanted to own the company long term, and you get an immediate 5% boost on your investment if you purchased it this time. On to a quick update about Cerner Corporation. So Cerner Corporation is in the middle of a tender offer for all of their shares from Oracle as part of an acquisition of the company. The tender offer for Cerner Corporation is for $95 a, a share and uh, it looks like it's just pending some of the, the regulatory issues in order to receive the go-ahead in order to get that. They did extend the tender offer for this and the interesting thing that has happened is that it looks like hardly anybody has participated in this tender offer. There's only 3.8% of the shares that have been submitted for the tender offer, which tells me, and I don't know if this is the case, but it tells me that there might be some sort of uh, moment where people are waiting to go ahead and participate. I. Uh, th that brings me back to some of the questions, you know, like, will this company actually get purchased? And if so, is the $95 a share the correct price? I think uh, I, I did some crunching of the numbers on this one, and I 
I think Oracle is actually getting a pretty decent deal at the price that they are paying. The company has a operating cash flow growth rate of about seven years, if you look at the past five years of data. And that seven years of, or 7% return would make it so that it would be a quick double over the next decade. So basically they want to, they want to buy the shares and why would Oracle want to do this? It's, it's like averagely priced in the market. And I think, I think there's a couple of things. I'm trying to think of through what the Oracle management is probably thinking as they're buying this. So the first thing that they'd probably be thinking about is, does the company have any type of synergies that meet with Oracle's programs? And I think it does. And I think that Oracle is seeing the Cerner business as a way for them to penetrate the market into the healthcare industry even further. And they, they provide a lot of back-end solutions for companies, and this is a business-to-business -business model, and a lot of, you know, there's a lot of big money available for it, and I think the hospital and industry would be a very good acquisition for them. The Cerner is approximately 20% of the current market capitalization of Oracle, and the at that price, you know, 7% growth rate, I, I think it's a pretty good purchase for them. The other question that I that I thought about as I was thinking through this and why Oracle might continue to still do this, and it might be that their management made some sort of knee-jerk reaction and they wanted to get into the medical business and they saw the post-COVID era and they're like, oh, there's going to be a lot more opportunity there. And I can see that happening. A, a, move to, a push to digi digitization would definitely be helpful in the medical industry, especially if they have to spend more money and infrastructure to put more of their staff into remote work locations. And if they're able to do that, then Oracle would provide the background for it. And I think that, I think that that's, that's actually quite valuable for Oracle companies. So again, I think that Oracle continues to demonstrate that they might be interested in it. Now in that case though, with only 3.8% of the investors that have submitted for the tender offer, and that was as of four days prior to the tender offer uh, completing in February. And the reason why they had to extend the, <laughs> the terms of the offer is, is that in this case, it looks like they might want to be, they might be getting a little greedy and they might want to be getting more out of this. And rightly so. If you look at last year's, last 12 months, worth of revenues, you're looking at something about 17, or excuse me, cash flows. Their operating cash flow is a little over 1.7 billion. And that puts them at an enterprise value to cash flow of about six, 16 times. And so, you know, in a growth industry or a growth-like industry at these sizes, I think that, I think that there is, there's still a little bit of money on the table. And you can see that the the fact that this may not go through at this moment it looks it, it comes from the disparity between the share price and the tender offer price you know it, it's not a lot it's maybe about four to five percent well it, it depends on the day but it, it's it's bumping around that three and a half to five percent range right now in my view i think that it will go through it might take a little bit longer this one might be one to to continue to put money into if you're interested in it in full disclosure i do have about eh, that's about five percent of my total portfolio in this um, for the tender offer before i finish I, I wanted to just share a little bit i've had a lot of questions about well do you put all of your money into this and i and i wanted to to let you know that when I, when I talk about 5% of my portfolio, I'm only talking about the portfolio that I have dedicated to tender offers and special situations and my own personal investing practice. This portfolio doesn't represent more than about 20% of my overall net worth. And so you need to realize that when I talk about these things, it's 5% of a very small percentage of my overall net worth. And I, I just want people to realize that when they participate in these things, you need to realize that there is there is a significant amount of risk and you need to go in with the understanding that if you lose it all, 
you shouldn't be adversely affecting your overall wealth. So with that mind, in mind, I, I appreciate you guys coming by. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will catch you next week. Thanks a bunch.